I know you're working on some new effects pedals. That's right, yeah. Uh, about uh, over a year ago, I started working with Vox, and the idea was to create a line of pedals, and that seems kind of obvious from the, the start, you know. And I, for about a, two years prior to that, I was, you know, this close to starting my own company. But we talked about that the last time I was in San Francisco yeah. over dinner. I just chickened out. I just couldn't see myself on the phone. Oh, it's rough. You know, and dealing with things I just don't want to deal about. I, you know, it's almost like when you get Pro Tools, you have to remind yourself to keep the guitar on. Otherwise, you'll be hunched over a keyboard for most of the day, you know. So I, I try to arrange everything in my musical life so it means I've got the guitar on, even like during a photo shoot. I mean, it really helps just to keep playing. So I thought, yeah, I can't do that. And, and the guys at Vox uh, were great. It was a huge R&D, um, what would you call them, a, a team, a, a uh, three-continent team, you know, from, from, from Europe and the, and the U.S. and uh, in Asia. And the input was great. All the guys I, I'm working with are guitar players, and we all play different. And so everybody had some input, and then of course I had years of experience in the studio and on stage, you know, liking certain pedals, cursing at most of them half the time, because they always go 85% where you want to go, and then mm -hmm. the rest of it falls apart. So uh, the first thing that we uh, really wanted to get to was the distortion pedal, and I'm, you know, I'm kind of like a purist in that. I like the idea that you could have a really beautiful sounding clean channel and then you can step on a pedal and you get a really great dynamic believable sound that kind of sets you free and gives you different kinds of gain different um, well I don't want to, well I'll have to use this word this different levels of saturation no pun intended <laughs> but we but the pedal is called the saturator so there you go <laughs> so I'm gonna be saying that word a lot I should just warn you so um, but that was the key was not only to solve the issues of um, you know, getting rid of the, the bumps at 100 hertz that a lot of these pedals have mm -hmm. because they don't really have a complete low end. Uh, trying to deal with uh, the scoop in the mid-range because they tend to not cut and, and that's because they're, they have this inherent cut. And then to try to tame the high end so it's the kind of high end that's useful, not the kind that just gets in the way of cymbals or, or every sound man out there on the planet just wants to dial out anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're, they take guitars and they start shelving at 6K anyway in the, in the house PA. So, you know, we're talking about usable EQ. And then the whole issue of what components can you use that are legal now, that you can use for manufacturing. Stuff has to be Rojas compliant. And uh, a lot of us have, you know, a closet filled with old pedals that have chips in them that are made out of lead and mm -hmm. you can't sell them anymore. And, uh, or, you know, your favorite big muff, and once it breaks, you can't fix it because the parts are gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, the history of the, the vintage pedal is that you use it, it breaks, say goodbye. <laughs> so I wanted to solve all of that and, and say we've got to come up with new components that are legal, that we can sell, that we can uh, fix, that we can exchange, and um, that make it a fantastic sound. So, I mean, easier said than done, right? So. Uh, but I think after 12 months of just hacking away, we finally got to this amazing level. The guys in Japan really did discover some things that we never knew existed. And we were able to use uh, you know, anecdotal stuff and real serious engineering from both the, the, uh, the crew in London, the US and Japan, uh, and in my basement to, uh, to, <laughs> to pull it all together. you know. And uh, I mean, it got really silly. I mean, you know, we'd be sitting there playing notes over and over, and all and of a sudden, listening for, and listening for the fall off, and listening to all these things little were, things. Like, yeah. is it clipping? Is it clipping enough? Is it clipping too much? You know, what happens when you turn the volume down? And you know, um, you know, you can. You, there are a lot of components out there, but it takes months and months to find the right ones, and it takes some dedicated engineers to diligently go through each one of them and to lay it out so that a musician knows how to uh, evaluate it properly mm -hmm. without getting their head and their ear all twisted up and you know at the end of the day you're just like I don't know what I'm hearing anymore. <laughs> well you know you're in such a good position because you're going to take it in the basement you're going to play it you're going to play it into the studio and then you're going to go yeah. out live Yeah. And, and it has to cut it in all three yeah. of those environments. And that's, you know, that's a good point you bring up because during the R&D, I was using the Saturator prototypes on the new record. 
um, you know, when you saw us play at the Ibanez show, I was using it live. And we had maybe up to 25 or more prototypes. So, you know, out there on tour and during the recording process, I'm using these things mm -hmm. and I'm reporting back, this thing is great. That when I use it like this, it's unbelievable. When I use it like this, it's great. This part here, we got to change it. You know, my whole thing was make it simple. You step on it, sounds amazing. That's what it's got to do. I don't want anything weird. I don't want anybody to have to change anything about their setup. It just has to do the trick. And it has a button that says more. So <laughs> what more could you want? It has more already. <laughs> is, it, is it here? It is, but it's not. Um, it's here, it's plugged in. It looks like, a, like it's on life support, actually. But, <laughs> but let me do this. this is, okay, so there's the pedal. And uh, we wanted to keep, uh, you know, a sort of a boutique look. And uh, that in itself is a whole story because we had the, the most space age looking pedals for the longest time. And then uh, I think it was Mike Bradley when we were working in my basement one day, we're standing at, you know, and there were all of these, you know, really boutique looking uh, saturator prototypes on the floor. And we finally said, why are we bothering with all the space age modeling kind of stuff with the outside of the box? Mm -hmm. This is what it should be because this is what it is. Mm, it's a box. A bunch of guitar players <clears throat> stepping on little boxes. So it's <laughs> like, all right, let's, let's keep some integrity here. So um, it's basically a distortion pedal. You step on, on, and there you go, bam, right? Um, and um, you, this is your more button. Yeah, of course, it won't look like this. It will look beautiful candy apple red, just like a JS 1200, for those of you watching at home. And then, um, but it will have these uh, very charismatic chicken knobs on there. And you've got your distortion level, your gain level, and you've got your tone level, and you've got your volume. And it does kick out a lot of volume, which is great, but not too much, just the right amount, so it doesn't drive your other pedals crazy. But along those lines, and I should take this off here, does that say more? That's a secret. <laughs> there, that there. And, um, well, it's got this little switch here. So why don't you ask me what that's for? What's that for? Okay, I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> okay, this, we've decided to call it pad. And what I noticed was, you get a pedal that sounds really great, really cranking, just, you know, it's got lots of angst, it's right on the edge there, and then you put it together with a chorus, or perhaps you've got a high gain wah-wah in front, and suddenly the pedal starts to crap out. And then you're forced with dialing back some of that anger, and maybe you don't want to, mm -hmm. you know. So we talked about, well, what can we do about that? If someone's doing a lot of work with a high gain wah wah and or, or a chorus or something that maybe wants to, you know, see a lighter signal, and you don't want to mess with your your basic tone generating things, is this little pad feature basically pads down some of the dynamics that allow it to come in and come out so that you won't get any of that horrible cacking sound. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's fantastic how it works. So I got to use it on the record as well when I had some over-the-top wah-wah playing and I still wanted to pick really hard. And so um, it's a subtle feature. If you sat there and you were playing one chord, flipping it, you'd be going, I think it's doing something. But in practice, with those pedals, that's when it really shines because it's supposed to be transparent, really. You shouldn't notice it mm -hmm. when it's functioning with, with those other pedals. So, But I'm really happy that, that um, you know, uh, Vox let me do it because, you know, every, as you know from manufacturing, every little thing costs money and, they, and we, we didn't want to make a $200 pedal. That's, that's very impressive. Yeah. I can't wait to hear that. To, to listen to the sustain. Yeah. So there's your signature Joe Satriani sound, which is very important to me, of course. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> but here's that beautiful ability for the... At full distortion, you can still back down your volume control and it cleans up, which is really cool. It's something so, I so really need. So then it becomes it becomes really driven by the guitar volume control. Yes, yeah. So then it can get a real bluesy kind of a sound just by using that volume control. Then as you bring it up, the volume feeds more gain. Now 
now it's also got this little more button here. Now, the thing with more is that it, it, it creates more distortion, but it keeps your gain in check. So you said it's not like a boost pedal that you don't want. And we, we had the option of changing the sound of the tone of it so that, you know, generally when you, when you throw another diode in there and you've got twice as much gain, you're going to get a little bit more crispiness. And at one point we actually had a version where it got darker just so the perception was that the sound didn't change. But then we realized no one would step on it not wanting a change. They're stepping on it because they want a change. Mm -hmm. So we left the whole thing wild and, and woolly. But it's great to go, especially if you take the volume control, the gain control down on distortion one, and you're dealing with just a crunch sound. But when you step on more, you get full sustain. And then back, it comes down just slightly for, for the crunch again. This is something I've always wanted, and in the past I tried to put two distortion pedals together, but they're not made to go together. together. You always got clipping, no matter where you set them, so the engineers figured out how to get the two full-on distortions uh, in one pedal, and then you can really use them. Uh, so you can start at 11, and you can have this more that takes you to 21 or 23. Or I got to do the math on that. At least 13. At least 13. <laughs> and or you can take the distortion and not run it full gain like I usually do, and use it just as like a crunch generator. And then uh, that more actually brings you up to snuff right away. And we f we set it so that at about 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock, that's what happens. You can go from crunch to full on distortion. But that's the I way you like to run like it. I especially like the way it reacts to the pickup and the volume control. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we have the, the PAF Joe and the Mojo here, and they're just fantastic. They're so well balanced, and not only do they sound great when they're full up, but they work so well when the, the coils are split or when you're using the, the, the filter, the high-pass filter and the volume control. It's just fantastic. You can get so many different sounds.